Yo, Matt Wild, yes, the Matt Wild just sent over a piano sample for me to chop up and then add some drums to, and we're gonna collaborate on this track. I cannot wait to get this rolling. So long story short, Matt hits all the vibes I'm looking for when it comes to piano samples and piano playing. He's just an incredibly talented pianist, so he basically eats moody chords for breakfast without trying. Here, check this out. Mmm, so good. But specifically, when I was hearing this, I already left a little comment here of what I want to chop up. Listen to this right here. That. And then just repeat that. Boom. Da, da, da. And just throw some drums on there. Ooh, this is gonna be so sick. I cannot wait. Here, let's go ahead and download this track so we can get started. Oh, and in case you're curious what platform Matt and I are using to collaborate, this is High Note, today's video sponsor. And it's an awesome place for musicians to collaborate and share their music ideas because it has a bunch of tools with musicians and producers in mind, like instant version toggling, full quality playback, and honestly, a few others that you'll probably see throughout this video. Oh, by the way, future Rick here, Matt and I decided to release a ton of the sounds and samples as a free download in a High Note space linked down below. So feel free to go check that out download them and possibly remix the track that we're making here. All right, let's get back to it. Now for a sample like this, I'm actually gonna pre-chop it in live a little bit, just kind of get some of the main parts that I want and then drop those in as sections or segments into the Octatrack. That way I don't need to fiddle around too much on the Octatrack, chopping up a live sample or a long sample, I should say. All right, so the goal here is just gonna be to get a few things that I really want. I really like that beginning section, that's cool. But what I really wanted was... Yeah, I want this whole section right here. Cut that out. We can uh, disable this for now, just so I can kind of keep an eye on what we're doing. And then what's great is because Matt played this all in E major, I know what scale we're in for the most part, right? He said it's kind of in there. And I know what notes I can probably add later if I'm gonna do anything melodic, but I might just leave that up to Matt. I've probably cut out more than 50% of this sample, which I'm totally fine with because I like the idea of limiting how much material I have to work with. And I know Matt's gonna be adding more on top of this. This is just kind of laying the groundwork for the track, right? Now I'm doing something that I've never done before, which is put different samples of the same sample on different tracks. And I'm gonna try and layer them and see if I can pull out any new rhythms with the same sample, but on three different tracks rather than how I usually do it, which is putting them all on one single track. So we'll see what this uh, comes up with. Um, track two is the main one. We're gonna slice that. There's not a lot of slices that I want out of this thing. Sweet, now if I go. This needs a little more bite. Ah, that's as much bite as we're gonna get, that's fine. Okay, all right, let's uh, play something in. Let's see what we got here. Okay, let's go to source loop. We'll do ping pong. Okay, so let's put this just like a little more uh, expected. Now, let's try something really weird. We're gonna look at sample three, which is this here. And I'm just gonna say, create a slice grid of 16 slices, align at the zeros, sure, and we'll turn slicing on. So there's a couple pops, but we can fix that with the amp envelope, the attack. Awesome, and then I'm gonna turn on, uh, we'll do dark reverb, send a little bit. Oh, hold up, hold up. Okay, hold on. Okay, I think I got it on the second page. Hopefully. Oh, that sounded sick.
Oh. I want this to be the second page though, so we need to shove this over 16 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, this sounds super tight. Maybe it's the new part, but let's uh, high pass it. And then we're gonna add some cue to just the low pass. Turn the low pass into a 24 dB pole or a four pole, whatever it's called. Lower this. And then lower this even more. We're gonna add this depth. Moment of truth, we're gonna bring this in slowly. See if it works. Doesn't work. Now I'm trying to figure out, is this too housey for Matt? What's he gonna do with this? He just needs to lay some crazy chords on top of this, right? Like a da, da, da. Yo, Matt, do something like that. Da, da. We'll see, because I'm just gonna send this to him. Maybe I'll send him a note and hopefully it does something like that. Cause that could be sick. And then a little bass line like. Yo, this is dope. Now there's still another sample here and let's try and do the same thing. We're just gonna go ahead and say slice. We'll create a slice grid of 16 slices, align at the zeros. Ah, you know, you got something going when you can listen to the loop for a minute. Listen to that. Vibing. Now here on three, we'll say uh, effects, turn the bass up, open the width up. Send it a little more time. Maybe Matt will like this, right? I'll send him both versions. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll let him choose which, whichever one he wants. Yeah, that could be dope. All right, so we got our slices here, and this track is way too loud from what I remember. And then this doesn't end where I want it to. Same thing. Yo, I'm afraid this might be too housey for Matt, but I am super down with this one. All right, let's see. Okay, you know what? I think we're working with something here pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and track this in just so I can send Matt some uh, examples, right? I'll go ahead and take uh, this part out for now. Lower this down. This is our hold amount. We'll just say hold for two steps, that's fine. Actually, let's do one step. I like this a bit more. Again, because I want these to twinkle on top of the or whatever chords he's gonna play. Terrible pitch. Oh, yes. Matt, I can hear it. Can you hear it? I know you are across the ocean, but can you hear it? I can hear it. Get some rough drums in here. <laughs> All right, I gotta send this mat. I gotta send this mat. We'll say this uh, times two. Oh, did I stop recording right at the? Oh well, he'll survive. <laughs> Matt, sorry. All right, cool. We're gonna consolidate this into just one long clip so you can listen to that, and we'll color it this pink or fuchsia, whatever that is. Sweet. So we got these different parts here. We're gonna go and uh, export these different little sections. We'll copy this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and export these here. All right, so now let me upload this. We're gonna upload just take one for now, and I'll show you why we're only doing take one because this is actually gonna be pretty dope. Watch this. All right, so if I go into take one, I can add a new version, and we're gonna upload take two. And then for this version, we're gonna upload three. All right, so check this out. We got idea one here. Let's make sure we go into uh, original quality. Let it load for a split second. Cool, idea two. 
right? And then uh, lastly, idea three. Uh, let me leave my note here. It says default. All right, let's see. Yo, Matt, I can hear some chords kind of like a da, da, or something along those lines kind of really filling in the space. And I left all of this really loud just so you can hear it. Um, but yeah, feel free to go wherever you think with this. And let me know if it's too housey. I can reel it back, right? The drums, the tempo, all that stuff is totally changeable. I got it all recorded and locked in. All right, man, excited to see what you do. There it is, save it in, boom. All right, on to another day when he sends this stuff back. And for sure, go check out Matt's video to see how he made the sample and all that stuff. It's a, this is a really fun, wild collaboration. Anyway, all right, I'll be right back. All right, just got word that Matt has sent over some additional stems for us to check out. I'm super stoked to hear what he has. Let's see what's up in this space. All right, idea two and four, developed with bass. All these ideas, sound incredible, blah, blah, blah. I'm taking the idea two and four. Dope, a little bass line in there, I'm down with that. This is without the bass. Oh. Here's some chords. Yo. Hmm. Basically all the chords I'm playing should go with the notes from the piano sample you chop. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Oh, I am so stoked. Here, he also left us a voice message. Let's see what he has to say. Hey Ricky, what's up man? Just wanted to jump on here and say how much I'm loving the ideas that you sent across. I've taken ideas two and four, and essentially when idea four comes in, I filtered it down, taking off the high frequencies, and I've ended up playing a new piano sample on top of it. All of the chords that I've played should align with the notes that you've highlighted with the piano flip, the original sample flip. Oh, this is gonna be great. So my idea with this is now that I have the stems, I'm gonna put this into live, right? which I have my Digitac little template that I always use, which of course you could download down below in case you're curious. I'm gonna be using Digitac as my main drum machine because in a previous video, this video right here, I wanted to just focus in on drums. So I have actually two patterns with the idea of a piano sample focus track because Matt's an incredible player and I wanna make sure that that shines through through the track and I don't just destroy all his samples. Hold down command so that it puts it into all their own little tracks. So we got our elements here with these beautiful chords. Okay, I can hear this two bar loop wanting to happen here and this is gonna be our intro. I'm really excited for this. There's one chord in here that I want to move. So we have boom. That part's cool. Okay, that's perfect. I, I like that a lot. I'm gonna move this over here and we're just gonna fake this by dragging this over. Check this out. Uh, this is really fun to do. So you can see that there's a little bit of a tail, right? In this little, you can hear it, especially if I solo it. We can hide that. We'll just push this over a little bit and then grab our crossfade, boom. And then do the same here, duplicate this, grab this over, Grab our crossfade, grab from here, slice that, grab to the beginning, and then um, hitting Command J to consolidate that as a new clip. Now that we have this as a new clip, I can just copy paste that over. Boom. That could be cool, actually, you know, if we brought that little bass line. Matt. Ah. Yes, yes. So here we're gonna go into like a little bit of a breakdown, right? And so that's kind of cool that these come in. 
And you can see that we have this weird like one bar uh, section here at the beginning kind of throwing off the way things look. That's okay, I can just push a lot of this over. And the way this kind of rolls in, I love that this just comes in on the second, but then I'm gonna need it to stop here. So we can get rid of that, but we'll let this one ride over just a little bit to get it um, all the way to this point, which is 32 or 33, and this is gonna be their first breakdown. We're gonna take the kick out and all that stuff here, and then the bass will come out here as well. We can go into some new chords, and these are the rest of the chords that Matt sent over. Let's see what else there is in here. Yes, sir. Lord, blessed be thy name. Let me see where these chords roll in. Right there. Now, I know from our original sample that this was an E major. I wanna open up bass. Ah, ah, yes, 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 yes. So the, did, uh, the stems that I originally sent over, these are idea four and idea two, which are the ones that Matt really liked. And grab both of these and put them in here. So let's see, uh, minus 20. Let's see what idea four sounds like. Yeah, that kind of works. And I'm gonna put an auto filter on this and band pass it. Do this, utility, boost it back up. Oh, okay, so we need to color this to make sure we have a nice little differentiator of what's happening. This is our little piano breakdown. I need to make sure that it goes back into this smoothly here. You can see that it kind of rolls around a little bit. If we really wanted, we could do something weird like this where we let these two kind of crossfade. So right now I'm just kind of like hyper tapped into the, like the stem of my brain and I'm just throwing ideas at this of what I usually like to see and expect from a track like this. I like the vibe, the chillness of it. It's very relaxing, it's very calming. And I'm kind of open to this and I like this idea. I do wanna add some more percussion-y things with the microphone, but uh, forgive me for going wild style right now. I'm just super juiced, super amped up about this track. And I'm gonna do what I always do, which is take a crash. I don't know, it just works. And then here we're gonna go minus 20. I'm gonna go delay, four, feedback down, bring this over here. Look, I already know exactly how I kind of like this to be set up. And then in here, we're also gonna grab an EQ8, put it before the delay, cut off a lot of the low end, and then zoom into here, da, 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 da. grab this, bring it back to here, a little more. We'll go right between those two. And a little quieter, minus 28. That's cool, and then let's do a ride. That's fine. We'll bring this here, hit reverse, drag it over, and see how I went over it? That's totally exactly what I wanted to do, so I can just go like this. So here, I'm hearing So I need to find that somewhere in here. I don't know what eight is, let's listen to what eight is. Oh right, eight was this weird idea that I had uh, while making this beat. But we're gonna go ahead and clear that out. And I'm gonna change our, I'm gonna clear out everything on this actually. And then I'm gonna add our open hat. Sweet, and we're gonna put this in here, amp. That's fine. Source. We're gonna put it into one shot mode and bring it down, bring this down. And we're just gonna listen to this little loop section here. Pitch it down. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and high pass this in here. 
So another thing I'm gonna do just so I can help myself start arranging is actually record in everything from the Digitac. So we're gonna go track one through eight, arm all these, go back to the beginning. And this is actually being clocked from the ERM, so I have it dead on the money, but I'm always gonna skip the first beat. So I'm just gonna record. I mean, it's a two bar pattern. We're probably good by now. There we go. Awesome, so now that we have this, I want to go and fix the very first hit. And that's kind of what I was talking about a second ago is the first hit's usually the, the worst, no matter what. And again, it was a two bar loop. So I know from here forward, we're good to go. Boom, 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 boom. I'll copy all those over. Bam, bam. We can just do this into like big eight bar chunks. That's kind of how I like to work anyway. And then on this 32, we're gonna take the kick out. And then of course, this isn't in at all the entire time. And then eight bar, that'll come back in. This will come back in. What happens if I take these out? That's cool. Okay. So uh, in another video, you might've seen that I was mixing and making a track real fast. I did this thing where like, I like to do this fake out drop or like bring everything back in, but then not for a split second. So I kind of want to do that here to really emphasize this little piano stem section. So this is going to happen here. And then on the third kick, after the third kick, it's going to be out and we're just going to leave it out. So it's going to come in. Actually, you know what? To really just like drive it home, we're just gonna let one kick come in and that's it. So bring this in here. And if we really wanted, we can grab this ride and just put it right here. Just to emphasize that kick a little. And that kind of hides the little x -x -x coming in, right? Then I can grab this section here, boom. Copy paste that, put it here, paste. Grab these, take those out. And now we're back into the original uh, loop from the beginning. And then here we have our roads and I kind of wanted to come in there. So I'm gonna just go ahead and clip this here, bring this over, slide this over a little bit. That's cool, and by this point in time, I kind of want this to be faded out. So we're gonna open up another auto filter on this, and we're gonna raise our resonance, bring this up, open this, hit A for automation, bam. And this stuff comes in right here, so drop this low. Since this is a higher register, it's not really gonna do much until 137, so I want it to come in a little quicker. too fast. This part here, we need some more percussion stuff, right? You can hear it, at least I can hear it. So we're gonna go ahead and open up another audio track. We're gonna listen to track one. And in total mix, we're gonna go to our microphone, turn up that 48V, turn that stereo off. Oh! Matt, that shit is so sick. Oh, this is so pretty. Da, 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 da. I want it there. That's where I want it. Da, 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 da. It's almost like uh, it needs to be here instead. We'll get rid of this. Let's see. I could be way wrong. Oh, ho, ho. yes, sir. -y. We're going to move all these over. Actually, no we're not. That one works really well, really well where it's at. So here I want it to go. And you can hear the bass line fell out, that's okay. Okay, so we're here. Uh, we're gonna call this one a microphone, play it from here.
Okay, there's something there. We're gonna go in and just take a little extraction from it. Put it here, go in here. We're gonna turn a loop on. And we just have this tiny little section here, loop that. If I bring this all the way over, whomp, get this here. Now we have this. I can just find a new rhythm in here. Like there's one on the ups, right? What about weirdly here? Nope, doesn't work. That kind of works. I like this up idea, but now let's just take this whole entire loop section and move it somewhere else. Okay, so I messed up at the beginning, but we can just shorten this here. That's actually cool. We're gonna go ahead and duplicate that just so I can save it, just to be safe. Let's see what else is in here. But I think that's real pretty. Maybe you can even throw some reverb on there just to give it some more space. So we'll turn our decay down to 500 milliseconds. Pre-delay, none. Save the highs, cut the lows. And then this is just the really wide version of our shaker. And this is just bringing in the dry signal, mixing it in with that wide. So he has, I think it's this. Yes, Zen delay time. All right, external audio effect on the roads. Audio output to three, four, audio input from five and six. It's gonna be these two, so let me see if it's in here. Hmm, yes sir. Let me try something strange. We're gonna go here and we're gonna open up an audio track for the Pro 3. And I know we're in a major. Let's just see what, what I come up with. I just want to hear something new. Just hit record, just to grab it all. I think there's something there. I kind of like that weird, the slide happens once in a while, kinda. You don't really know when it's gonna happen, but it sort of does. This is kind of, I think it just fills the space a little more, maybe too much. This section happens. And just kind of jamming, kind of chilling. I like it a lot. We're gonna duplicate it, get rid of this. And we have a lot of drums to still work with, right? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of our Digitac effects. I'm gonna get rid of our Octatrack track for now. And I wanna bring this down in line so we have a little bit better uh, visibility of our bass line, which it's funny because we have a track called Bass. And then now that this is happening, we need something else to happen. So we're gonna bring this in. Yeah, that's cool. We can let those live. This is the main shaker part. Actually, yeah, we'll let those stay in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a utility to this and get to this part and get those out. So with the utility, I'm gonna just add a gain section here. We're gonna zoom into this, bring our pencil all the way down to zero here. And across this whole entire section, we're just gonna slowly fade the volume down of our shakers almost to a point where nobody notices. And then just to be safe, I know it probably is fine, but I like to just not have to worry about that. We'll turn our looper off.
And this whole time I'm going to be playing the Zen delay. And then here we want the kick to come back up. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, I heard it, I heard it, I heard it. So these need to be out. This uh, beautiful section needs to come back, come back in. Boom, boom. We're gonna ride this part in right there. Let me get in there and make it real smooth. And then you can hear that this also just dies. So then I can turn the feedback up. And then the bass here can even come out. And then, yo, we have the subtle shaker. So this can come out, our claps can come out. And then remember those uh, little utilities? I'm gonna use them again here. So come into here, zoom, 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 zoom. Don't copyright strike me, Masta, please, I swear. what this is like out. Oh, what if we just left that little gallop in there? Same with this. Utility. Automate. All the way down. From here to there. Ah, oh, yes, I hear it, I hear it, I hear it. So this could even move over just a bar. Reverb. Oh, this is pretty. Yo, this is super pretty. Okay, let's see what we're working with. And you know what, just for fun, let's throw a crazy glue compressor. And just like slam it. I almost think this roads can come in a little later. Oh yeah, that part's so sick. Okay, there's a lot happening right here I need to fix. If we go into here, I think our uh, auto filter is still way down on this, which is okay. We can just bring that up here. I really want this to just be super far gone. way in the back, and I'm gonna throw a Haas on here as well. Oh, this is a little bit faster. <laughs> this is sick. Yo, I'm so down with this track. There's just some movement in the background. Sweet. Now I think all I need to do is just record this last little um, Zendele part on this Rhodes right here, which will be really fun. So let's go ahead and do that now. Crazy feedback on there. Let's get it. So pretty. So I'm just rocking this. I need to fix 
that. Get rid of that. Get cut short. It's just like texture in the background, right? That's what we're chasing. Now here's an important part. Got to capture this. Push the feedback high. It'll self-oscillate. Bring it back now. Let it fade out. This is always the scary part, moving the delay time. Nailed it. That should be good. And now I'm just gonna mute the roads. And if we go and look at this here, uh, we just need to take this and push it over just a tiny bit. Now, we're basically not listening to this anymore. We're just listening to the Rhodes plus Zen uh, delay. Let me make sure I put that in there so to not confuse math. Now, I'm really open to hearing what Matt might want to do when it comes to any other, like, um, any other sounds on this thing, only because, let me get this in there. I think it could use like some more texture or like lead line stuff and maybe even take out some of the percussion. Maybe I have that percussion stuff in there specifically to give it that texture that I think it needs, right? Or I could be way wrong. Maybe he's like, yo, done deal, this is it. Um, let's wait for the third wave to load up. All right, let's see what we got on here. on here. I want it to be a bit more plucky, if that makes any sense. Kind of like a... Maybe something in there. I don't know. I want him to go all Herbie Hancock on this thing. There's a giant idea, giant solo idea full of, who knows, something along these lines. I know Matt's gonna completely shred on this and make it sound super sick. So let's go ahead and upload this, export the stems and get it back up into high notes so he can mess around with this. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that I have no tracks selected and I'm actually gonna go ahead and clean up all of this in the back end. I select all this. Hit Command Shift R just to get to the export section, and I'm gonna export all individual tracks. Uh, first arrangement, stems, boom. And here we go, easy peasy. Oh, here, important lesson. So it's rendering something in real time. That's because we still have an external audio effect. One being this um, here. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that off. But most importantly, the one that's on the roads, we're gonna turn that off as well. So it's gonna render all those except for those in real time because it wants to process through whatever the external effect is and it can't do that quickly. That's why I like to record it in here as its own separate thing and it's already done. So when it does export, it exports really fast. It seems like a simple thing, but uh, you could quickly kind of forget about it. For example, I just did. Now, these are all the stems, and I've only used um, internal Ableton effects, so I'm pretty sure Matt has a lot of this. And just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and hit Collect All and Save. And it's gonna collect all the samples, all the presets, everything, and save that as the between border set. I'm gonna go ahead and save that now. And if we go into our finder where that's actually located, here under Matt Wild, first arrangement between borders project, this is gonna have all our samples and everything plus the Ableton project in it. So we should be good to go as long as he's still on the same Ableton session as I am. 
And here, which is where both of those live, right? I'm just gonna compress this and put this into one zip file so nothing gets lost, nothing gets corrupted, nothing gets all weird and wilded out. And you can see it's a pretty big file, almost four gigs, three and a half gigs to be exact. And that's because I did such long takes, long arrangements of a bunch of recorded audio, plus all the stuff that he sent over. So once this is compressed, I'm gonna put it into our high note so he can download it and further take a look at the session the same way that I have it here on my laptop. And that's gonna upload it here. And once that is in it, let me put some chat notes. I cannot wait to hear what he sends back. We'll see what he does. All right, here we go. Matt sent over some of the final finishing touches. Now we just need to do a light mix little cleanup of the arrangement, and then replace the bass that Matt originally wrote with the Pro 3 patch that I used just to kind of bring some cohesion to the entire thing. So let's go ahead and check it out. Whoa, what the hell is Keyscape? This is nuts, this project's crazy. One sec, let me figure this out with Matt. So I don't have Keyscape, but thankfully Matt being the OG that he is, he went ahead and flattened everything out. So stuff that has MIDI and sidechain and whatnot, all the MIDI stuff here, you can see, it's fine because he recorded it in. So those are all muted and we should be good to go. Oh yeah, I see it all here. It's all muted and I can replace it with whatever I want. Awesome, sweet, thanks Matt. All right, so we're just gonna have to ignore this orange bar down here at the bottom because I don't have basically any plug. <laughs> all right, let's see what we're working with. This is all our stuff here, right? And then it goes over into this little section here. So this is where it gets nuts. I mean, look at this stack that we got going on. Okay, cool, time shot. Dude, this is sick. All right, let's hear this. Okay, I like this here without this solo. And then we can say. Damn, he went all out. <laughs> Yeah, we can just go ahead and delete my take. We don't need that. Rhodes and Zendelay is cool. And then he added some strings, which is really pretty. Awesome. Okay, this is awesome. So we just need to fix the bass now, which originally was Matt's bass, and I eventually jumped it up to my bass idea, which was the Pro 3, that boom, 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 boom. And I think it's here in the Digitac group. Pro 3 idea, what do you think? Yeah. We'll go ahead and take this up. And Matt gave me the MIDI for the Moog bass. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> yes. I hope that was okay. I don't know what I just did. <laughs> uh, and we'll start the bar here. Bump, 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 bump. And then that comes all the way here, if I'm not mistaken. Perfect, there it is. Would you look at that? Technology, the future is now. And then I can just go into our Pro 3, which is still listening to the Pro 3. Yes, it is. Record that. And let me mute this bass track and play this part back. Oh, right, and then say output to Pro 3. A little quieter. And we'll do that little Duran bass line. Lower, select all these, shift down. Yes. Now, to make sure that my um, latency isn't off, here's a really useful tip. We're just gonna go here, select this, and hit record, right? And, oh, hold on, look at this. That's probably where some of our latency is at. Okay, so there's some swing in this, right? There's some life to it. I want to make sure that all of these are on because that's got to hit, right? Boom, with everything. Let's see how it goes into the next part. So then it's going to go into the actual recorder. That's cool. 
Yo, Matt's got all the tips. What is this like crazy naming thing up here? I don't even know what the hell this lane is. Yeah, I think this is cool. And we're gonna play that in. So we're gonna go ahead and hit record. And I'm gonna turn the volume down and slowly fade it up. What notes is he playing? F sharp, A, B, C sharp, E, G sharp. Okay, hold on. F sharp, A, B, C. That's, this is fine, but let me just try one more thing. That was it. Didn't capture any MIDI, just recorded audio, like an amateur, but it works. And there's a, a motion in there that I'm going from and then I go I want to incorporate a slide, but I think it's too long of a slide. Oh, that's it. That's the slide. That's the one. All right, here we go. Oh, hold on, here we go. Ooh, yes, sir, that's the one. And you can already see that it's a lot louder than uh, this clip here, but our most important thing that we need to go and make sure is that our recording is spot on. So it's a little late. Bring it right on. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I see this is supposed to land right on the money. Oh, I pushed it a little too far. All right, that's good enough. So now if I go into here, let me just make sure I got this little section touched up. Yeah, that works. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit more. You know what we can do to mask this? We can just get rid of this section here. So this last little note is great. And then we can get rid of the kick right here as well to just kind of mask. Oh, look, the kick already goes away, but we'll make sure it goes away a little sooner. Awesome, and then we need that little crash to come back in. And it already does that. A little louder, please. We'll open this one up gain-wise. Even more. And then we're gonna just bring down the track volume. So I want this right at the beginning to be quiet, but then the crash to be a little more prominent. And you know what? Since there's so many like airy elements in here, this can actually just live out. And we'll bring down this little delay because it's a rhythmic but because these strings come in, it kind of hides that. And if anything, it's just adding a bit more confusion or kind of like mud and dust to the mix that I don't need. Let's see what this sounds like with less of this. Yeah, that's cool. I'm down with that. Now we have a side chain on these strings here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and put it over on our bass, just to kind of help drive the pump that we're getting from everything else. If I solo this, that's cool. Hit a little harder, a little slow release, just to drive the vibe. And as I always mention, we need to pick. Do we want the kick to drive this or do we want the bass to drive this? Personally, for this one, I love the bass, but I want it to take a back seat to the kick. So with that said, we're gonna throw an EQ8 on here, set this to the four pole and put this at about 50. And if we listen to this now, okay, it's doing a weird resonant, right? If I take this off, 
Oh, it's doing a weird resonance thing because this, what the hell, 20? Whose idea was that? Okay, without this, a lot of low end, but this still sounds like a bass to me. And I actually wanna soften up how much gets cut. And I'm gonna bring this up a little higher and then bring this in with a kick. Look at our kick, put an eight on here, and then just say anything below 24 has gotta go. That's fine, what about here? That's fine. Okay, cool. And then our um, piano doesn't have anything either. So we're gonna take the piano sample and drop this on here. Yo, what is happening? Am I tripping? Why is it at 25.2? Did I do that? Did I move so fast that I didn't even realize? Okay, anyway, back to our piano. We'll do 10, a little slow release. All right, it's got the glue compressor on there still. Oh man. Okay. Solo's good. Strings though need to be EQ'd. And I'm also just kind of tucked, am I right? They are really back there, but. What about without them? Yo, this is actually kind of sick. What if I brought this back in? Hmm. This is the move. This is definitely the move. Here. Off of that. There it is. Ride the vibe. We gotta keep it staccato. Here we go, here we go. This. this is nuts. That Zen delay is amazing. Oh, and I wanted this time of the tick, this, to have a utility on it and slowly just fade away as if time was just passing by. I heard this, I did a little car test and I was like in love with that sound and I was like, oh, if that just slowly over time disappeared, it would be really, really pretty. So we're gonna do this, do this. Grab this, put it here, put a little bit of a curve on here. And then just, we're listening to the. There it goes. Let's put an eight on there. Oh. So good, so good. I'm so into it. I think the Pro 3 bass is a little like too prominent. It needs to be tamed up or something or have the edge taken off. But I'm gonna try putting a glue on here and just seeing. I feel like just certain notes kind of pop out a little too much. And sure, we have a really aggressive side chain. You know what, let's do this. We're gonna go minus 30 and just slowly bring it in and not look at it. It's kind of nice. Bruh, we're at zero? Come on, I was like, that's nice. It's exactly where we were. But I think this glue compressor here is helping catch some of the peaks. Oh yeah, listen, that's without it. And then with it. Yeah, I like it with it. It sounds a little pillowy, a little too much maybe, but it's okay for now. And again, the other thing that to note is we're mixing into this crazy glue compressor already. 
So without this, everything's kind of there, but it's nice personally. I know some people don't like mixing into a compressor, others do. I'm of the latter where I do like mix mixing into a compressor because you can really start to hear how certain sounds pop up and other sounds kind of get masked and pulled away while everything is there. What I hate is getting a mix down, sounds good, then I put a compressor on it, and then I gotta do the mix a little more to get it sounding good again because the compressor starts moving things around. And personally, I really like the sound of a pretty crunchy compressor, like a really squashing sound. So that's why I have this like just slamming. Now, let's go and throw my little Ricky T secret sauce. Where is it, Ricky T secret? Boom, it's no secret at all. But we're gonna go here, I'll open this up so you can see what's happening. Really simple. And we're just gonna take a section where there's everything happening. Okay, cool, a bunch of stuff is happening. You can see what's moving. We can push our highs a little bit. Push our mids, I want them to get right up into this a bit. And then our low push, it's there, but I actually want more bass. And I usually set this to about minus 12. And now we can really... Mm. And with caution, right? Because you don't want to just push this in there for the sake of it. It starts getting really crunchy and high. Without it, of course, take note that this is just volume difference that we're really listening to, but... I just like the way this feels. We got the pump going in, then another little squash, and then the limit, and we can push this up to hit our zero limit. We're getting pretty close, so we wouldn't take much. I'm happy with that. This is pretty. I just want to hear this little breakdown here. You know what? I really want that part to shine. So we're going to go look at this. We have this. I'm going to maybe just take this out. I guess we do kind of need that. Let's see if we can get that rocking right where we need it. Bam, bam. I just wanted to land on that. Oh, you know what'll be cool? If we went like this, showed a little bit of that, grab this, grab this, reverse this. Oh, Jesus, it's gonna reverse the entire clip. Yo, that is dope. It needs some work, but that is freaking sick. That's cool. And then we're just gonna bring the gain down on this. That's cool. And then bring this over a little bit and crossfade these into each other. And bring it down even more. This is just for the scholars. Uh, or that's actually kind of cool. What about this? Okay, you know what? I stand corrected. Matt's correct. I am wrong. Here, you know, the context. Do I like that? Boom. Oh, it wants to land somewhere, right? I think I'm overthinking it at this point. You know what? That works. I spent all that time for no reason, but it's okay. We're back at it. Oh, heard a pop. Pop. Oh, 
It is the piano. Oh, bloodline. This is because I chopped it. This is because that crazy chop I did at the beginning, and then I consolidated it, remember? I didn't do a good job consolidating it. Oh boy, I'm never gonna hear the end of this. So, okay, this is gonna take a second, but I need to redo this because those pops are gonna be the death of me. But it's kind of fun to do this because then you can start doing these weird little things, like these little blends and get some. That's cool. That's cool. And I wonder if we can actually just push this all the way over. Yes, awesome. Okay, so now I'm gonna select all this green, Command J, and just consolidate this. Now, I just need to go ahead and follow this path that I got down here. So you can see on this part, I cut out this last note to here and faded that, that's okay. Grab this, copy this, boom, boom. This is a whole different section that we liked originally. Now, if I go in here and paste this, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and turn loop on so I can do this a little quicker. And I'm just gonna loop this entire section all the way to here. But we need to fix this part here. So this part comes in and blends in with this. Awesome, that works. 17, get rid of that. Oh boy, all right, I think that's kind of it. Yo, this was way too much fun to make. A ton of work, but so rewarding. I really hope Matt wants to collaborate on some more stuff. I'm so grateful for him. Maybe we'll release like a three track EP with this one included. Who knows, let us know down below what you would like to see from us. And uh, yeah, appreciate it. Thanks again to High Note for sponsoring the video. Thanks again to Matt. Please go check out his channel. Tell him I said what's up. And uh, I'm gonna let the track play out for a little bit just so you can get a better vibe of the entire thing. And I think we're pretty much there. I might do a couple little tweaks here and there. But for the most part, I think we're good to go. Got to do a couple car tests. And yeah, until next week, my friend, you already know the drill. Share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.